part of the challenge in, um, in what we do is uh, staying on top of, you know, evolving technology and, um, you know, there's a lot of study and work uh, that, that goes into doing that. Um, and then we try to, um, you know, bring those, uh, the things that we learn, we bring them to you. So. Uh, last week you heard me mention that uh, we have uh, an exciting announcement to make about a new um, uh, system, software system, and um, it's a, more than that, it's a philosophy uh, that, that helps pull the various complex threads of, of online marketing into one uh, coherent system uh, in which uh, reporting is and tracking is a cornerstone of it. Now we've offered all of these things uh, separately in a kind of a la carte fashion, but this system um, pulls them all together. <clears throat> and you know, I'm perfectly happy in telling you uh, the name of the system is HubSpot, and uh, it is a very incredibly well thought out and uh, very well organized and supported system that pulls the threads of, of search engine optimization, of, um, of email marketing, of uh, pay-per-click advertising, and social media into one coherent um, platform and allows you to uh, monitor and track this um, uh, so that you can determine return on investment. That's one of the you know hardest things for people to do. That's one of um, you know the biggest challenges uh, around um, uh, online marketing, and it is of course you know the desire of every business person to want to feel that their money is being well spent. So um, in our adopting of this program, which um, should start within um, the next uh, several weeks, uh, we will be going through. A series of training. Um, uh, it's about 10 hours of training a week uh, that we'll be going through um, uh, to learn to use the ins and outs of it um, in this specific, um, you know, uh, version of it. So uh, the the cornerstone of this system is the creation of content. Uh, in the form of blog posts, but also in things like white papers, which are uh, generally industry-specific position papers, um, in case studies, and in um, you know how-to manuals and things of this nature, things that that your clientele might find value. This could also take the form of. Uh, things to watch out for when you're making a buying decision or reasons to choose your service in comparison to um, someone else who offers a very similar product line. Um, this is where the creative work and the assistance of someone like ourselves is very important because we have um, you know, the marketing background and the writing skill to help you create this content that is going to um, allow you to uh, systematize your marketing and um, track the responses to it so that you can see a person come in as a visitor to your site, then become um, a contact, and then you can nurture that contact over time by providing them access to additional uh, pieces of content that they will feel you know, that are valuable to them in making their buying decisions to use your service and that you know in by following this you know procedure that you would uh, turn them into essentially a very warm lead someone who is ready to make the choice to use you and how do I know that this works because this is essentially the exact pathway that I followed uh, in hiring this service that we're going to uh, engage with. Um, uh, and this is, a, you know, in my experience, the most uh, well thought out and coherent um, platform for, for doing this, this sort of work. Now, um, uh, the challenge has been, and some of you may have heard me joke about this, that um, uh, 
the cobbler's children go barefoot. You know, in in regards to our own uh, in our our own website, we have not been marketing ourselves using the tools that we offer or encourage other people to use. This is going to change um, immediately because you know we're going to be. Uh, this is. Uh, an inarticulate phrase, but eating our own dog food is, is a, a term that people use uh, to describe the process that we're going to be engaged in. Um, and uh, it will be one of, of personal growth in, and business growth because we will be then you know, casting our, our net out and, um, and uh, pulling in new clients that we would not uh, do so otherwise. We set ourselves some very aggressive sales goals for the second half of this year. We're trying to increase our sales by 50%. And while all of you have been very helpful in uh, referring us people, um, we need to cast our net even wider to to grow our sales in, in that regard. So we're going to be the, our own first guinea pig, and that will then allow us to uh, use this system um, to sell out to you. Now, it's not a magic bullet, you know? Uh, it still takes work and it still takes thought. And, and that is, again, where, you know, the content creation comes into play. We will have to um, work with, you know, ourselves and then with uh, each person who chooses to adopt this program to create this compelling content. Um, and it will be based on your experience. It will, you know, um, be revolving around some of the other things that we've talked about in the past, you know, your unique value proposition in the marketplace, how you differentiate yourself uh, in the marketplace, and um, uh, it will have to be done, you know, in a way that others perceive value there and are willing to uh, give up their contact information um, uh, in order to get to the information. So um, I'm excited because. Uh, because of the comprehensiveness of the program and because of the, um, the quality and the um, attention to detail that I've seen in their system, um, again, it, it, it pulls a lot of uh, disparate um, areas of our business together into one um, coherent thing and I'm looking forward to applying it. And um, uh, it's, it won't be for for everyone, and we will continue to offer all of the services um, that we do offer, but now it may um, allow us to uh, help businesses at a higher level, businesses that um, know that they need to have a monthly marketing budget and uh, that they want a system in which um, their return on investment can um, um, be tracked and, and realized. and. Uh, um, in, in general, my talks in the past have dealt with, you know, uh, technical issues. Uh, two minutes. Well, um, this is a more of, of a philosophical approach to, to, um, uh, to web marketing, and uh, it's one that I'm, I'm excited about. I would like to um, open it up to any questions. They don't have to deal with with uh, you know the topic that I just talked about. If you have any questions about websites, yes, Dr. Tran. I'm hearing something about a responsive website. I guess if you use a smartphone. Mobile responsive. Phone. Yes. Is there a way to tell if your website is responsive or has the ability to do so? Yes. Generally, just the, the the act of going to it on a smartphone <coughs> or an iPad uh, device will tell you uh, immediately if it is responsive. Generally, the ones that are not responsive, what happens is is that the entire page is shrunk down to to fit the screen dimension, um, and uh, things can look very tiny and it can be hard to to navigate around. A mobile responsive design, what it does is it actually um, detects the device that is coming to it and it presents it with a version that is sized to fit in that screen. And when it does that, it sometimes um, uh, it uses a variety of techniques to reorganize the navigation, which is often very uh, wide and horizontally oriented, and it, it orients it in a more vertical 
um, uh, position. It also generally uh, narrows down the content into a column uh, that fits the screen and can be easily read. It may also adjust the, the font size so that it is larger and easier to be read on a mobile device. Um, and uh, this is a component of literally every new website that um, uh, we develop. And it involves creating a separate set of what's known as cascading style sheets, which are, um, that is the, the markup language that tells the content of your site how to appear, the colors, the fonts, the positioning, and, and things of that nature um, that tell it how to appear in the different browser devices. Um, does anybody else have any questions? Quinn. Is HubSpot a, uh, a CRM for business owners or is it industry specific? Right. Well, um, it, it, it is, it could be looked at as a CRM for businesses. Um, in that you would you would use it to create what is in essence a master marketing list, uh, and you would use that uh, then to to um, gradually over time repeatedly uh, engage with those people that have contacted you through um, through your website. So yes. Um, Does it also include online scheduling? Online scheduling. Um, I don't know enough about it yet to say whether. It, but, but I would say that yes, 100%, it, it, it does uh, um, include scheduling for sending out emails to people, responses to um, questions and, and things of that nature could be sent in a, in a, in a scheduled fashion. Yes. Okay, is that it?